notes. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about Hard Knocks? Yeah. We're going to have the after. We, as we talked said before, we're going to have the after show. And uh, I guess what are we expecting at this point? I, I, I wanted to I, actually real quick before that. I wanted to say, like, I feel like from talking with people who have been in the media or just around other places or have no ties to Lions, it is fascinating to see that a lot of people, especially last year, there was a very, there was this apathy. And I think a lot of people said that Hard Knocks has kind of run its course. Like nobody was really interested in watching the Cowboys on Hard Knocks. And I saw almost nothing about the Hard Knocks in season, which felt like a bit of a Hail Mary play to get people to pay attention to Hard Knocks again. But I will say this, Dan Campbell is that X factor. And it seems like a lot of people want to watch the excitement and the uh, energy the lions are probably going to put on hard knocks yeah if we get if we get the good cuts that we think we're going to get i mean and that it's if it's not too edited down that we're going to get you know exciting weird guys rather than just some you know very you know stilled angry people all the time i think i'm not going to say it's going to breathe life into hard knocks but i've definitely seen more interest for people who are non lions fans to be interested in hard knocks this year. And I, th- I think it starts and ends with the personalities on the coaching staff. Like the car knocks has made it clear both in terms of what they've already showed, what they've already leaked. And in terms of, you know, Shannon Furman, the, 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 the director of, of hard knocks has gone on a couple, you know, Detroit media spins where she's kind of explained what they're looking at. And she's made it very clear. Like, this Lions coaching staff is intriguing and nothing like she's seen. Like she's, she's a hard knocks veteran. So she's seen all these coaching staff and she sees how unique this is and how energetic they are. And so, I mean, we just watched a clip of, of Lions practice recaps uh, from the Lions point of view. And half of it was Aaron Glenn and Deuce Staley going at each other. And so that's that, like that stuff. It, if you're not there at training camp practice, you're missing out because it's, it's a riot. And I, I imagine we're going to see a ton of it. And I, I know they're going to lean into like the coaches being former players and all that. So I think that's going to breathe a lot of life into the show because I feel like peop, the thing that people get tired on is just like, okay, we get it. Like it's, it's a grueling four weeks for these guys. The, 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 the guys on the roster bubble are, are, you know, you know, emotion pulling. It, it's kind of, it, yeah, it's I feel like, they've, right. Like with yeah. the guys on the roster bubble, like, okay, some of these guys are going to make it. Some of them aren't. And they, you get to know them in the first four episodes, and then some of them are there and some of them aren't, and it's sad or happy. Um, this, I feel like this is going to have a fresh feeling. And the one thing that I think they told the, uh, the Dungeon of Doom guys that they're bringing back for the first time in like four or five years is sit-down interviews with the players and coaches, which is interesting. Like, I don't, I don't even really remember that ever being a part of Hard Knocks, but um, that, could, that could also breathe a little bit of energy into the show. I'd love a light, nice smash cut to like Dan Campbell sent, you know, giving some Michael Jordan. I took that personally, right? Kind of, kind of talk, but um, no, I think, I think you mentioned the formulaic. It, it's definitely something I have noticed. I think when Hard Knocks first started, it was a lot more self-serious about like the gruelingness of it, and I think the Lions can bring a f- bit of fresh air with like just the way they carry themselves and have fun. I don't know. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm most intrigued in it, this. What this happened in between our uh, our podcast segments, but like the Aaron Glenn and Do Staley stuff. Like, I want to see all of that yeah. content. All of that content needs to be on my football screen. And I, I think, like, as big as the players are in terms of storylines and everything, like the coaching staff is arguably just as interesting, if not more compelling, than than what's really going on in the roster. And I'm not trying to say that as like an indictment on, you know, the personalities of any of the players or anything. I'm sure there's going to be tons of players that emerge uh, in terms of getting this opportunity to, uh, to get themselves out there more transparently, but man, like it, it's coaching staff. Number one, that's, that's the thing that I am most excited to see. And that's, and yeah, like I said, like, I think that's hard knocks already knows that. And I think that's going to be a huge part, but yeah, like, like you said, I think there, there are a lot of players too, right? Like we, we, we know that, Hard Knocks went to the the St. Brown family ha- household. Yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, who's, who's not excited to see more I'm on I, I know I Chris, think Chris I, has got a grin ear to ear right now. Like I have, I have head cannon of the St. Brown family and I <laughs> want it validated, but also, I mean, we've, we've had our interviews with him. We love him to death, but 
Jamal. How much are we going to get a Jamal Williams? Let's go. Let's go, baby. Yeah. I mean, get, especially now that you tell me they're going to do sit downs. I want him just doing a sit down talking about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, <laughs> trying to explain that to HBO. I don't think they're going to, I don't think that's going to make no. the, the cut. I know. I know. I know it's not. I don't care. But we have my mind castle. But man, like him, I, and, and I want to like stress this too, because we had him for an interview after practice. I think it was like, it was early in the week last week. And we had to wait an hour, like literally an hour, because after practice, he spent an hour talking to fans and signing things and, and receiving gifts. Like that's become the thing now is everyone's giving him anime gifts. And so um, I, I hope they, they do him due diligence and just in terms of his overall kindness um, beyond just kind of the quirkiness of him, I think is, is something that I, I want to see. And then like the other guys, like I, I still want him to see, I Jeff Okuda to me still remains such an enigma that, that doesn't, isn't very media. I don't want to say media savvy, but just not a lot of interest in, in interacting with the media. So I hope hard knocks gets a little bit out of him mm-hmm. because I, I think his journey is is just fascinating. Any other players? You I guys? think, no, I, I just think the thing for me more than anything right now is like looking at this because like, look, I, I know we're coming off as like overly excited about the guys who are here, but I think that's all because we like characters. We like personalities. Right. And regardless of what this team does this year, as far as wins and losses, I'm at least interested right now in this moment with kind of a weird cast of, of just weirdos that the, that the Detroit lions are right now. That's what it comes down to. It's like me, if, if I'm approaching this as a neutral NFL fan, a neutral sports fan, the fact that there, that this is such an oddball group is a good selling point. It gets people interested in, it gets people excited about the Detroit lions. It, there is legitimate like national interest in the Detroit lions that any other way that the Detroit Lions would carry themselves, people would just be like, yeah, I don't care about the Detroit Lions. It's just one of those other teams at the bottom of the NFL. Nobody cares. But that is, if you, if you can say nothing else, at least for PR, for getting people to maybe tune in and root for the Lions, Dan Campbell's regime has done a pretty good job so far. And I think that's part of the reason why they were interested, yeah. at least had a little bit of interest in being on Hard Knocks this year is because they, they understand it's a PR move. Yeah. Right. Well, they they asked to be on Hard Knocks. Most teams sort run of. away from Hard Knocks. Yeah. Yeah. The sort sort of. But like, I guess I guess my point is like, I I just I I know that's eventually going to get to the old heads who are be like, I don't care as long as they just win football right. games. Like, that's 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 fine. That's fine. But I think what's kept me sticking around talking about the Lions has been, this has been an incredibly interesting team, and I think this year in particular, it's been more than it's been the most interesting it's been in a long time. I, I think what I'm, what I'm really looking forward to, as I mentioned, you know, I think that there are some personalities on this team that can be tapped and, and can end up, you know, being really interesting and compelling. Uh, but just for so long, it seemed like this team was so shrouded in mystery, you know, I mean, like going back to the Patricia years, I mean, there weren't a lot of players that were like, quote unquote, like, I mean, and if they were, if, if there were big personalities, they were jettisoned, right? right. I mean, like Darius Slate, Quandary Diggs, yep. Damon Harrison. Like, I, I would have loved to see a hard knocks with a lot of those guys. And I know we've talked, like, maybe in, like, list casts and stuff like that of, like, players we wish that were still on the Detroit Lions that we could see on hard knocks today. But I think it's just really cool that the Lions are getting this platform because this is a really big deal. I mean, yeah. you know, the, I, I Again, I think the most compelling thing for anybody who's going to tune into this, who is just a, as Chris mentioned, just a uh, non-biased observer of the or NFL. Just a casual fan or a fan of some other team who just wants it's, to consume NFL content. Yeah, It's it's Dan Campbell, yeah. right? It's, it's, Absolutely. The, it's Absolutely. the head coach. It's the head coach, 100%. And he's interesting. I mean, there's a reason why I didn't watch last year, because I think Mike McCarthy is boring as hell. Like, the only thing I remember from Hard Knocks last year was that Jerry Jones put salt on his McGriddle. <laughs> well, That's yeah. all I remember. All I remember is Mike McCarthy. That this goes to your Mike McCarthy. Like he was making Austin Powers references in 2021. Cool. All right. Sweet. <laughs> so he seems like he's super in touch with <laughs> right. what's going on. Right. I I think that. I guess this is the overall point I'm trying to make is that like I think that they have a coaching staff in place 
that is going to encourage those personalities to come out. Right. And I think that having a coaching staff that has played before understands um, how demanding the NFL can be both physically and mentally. I think that they're going to give those guys a ton of shine and it, it, that's why it's going to be compelling week to week because I know I'm there and I'm going to enjoy what Dan Campbell and the coaching staff has to offer, but there's going to be cool things to learn about the players along the way. And, and if I could go back to Dan Campbell for a second and back to Shannon Furman, who was on, like I said, the, uh, the dungeon of doom podcast. One thing she said that had me really excited. And I think it was, it was all of our concern when the lines first got hard knocks, they're like, Oh God, are they just going to show like motivator Dan Campbell? And everyone's going to think that's only him. She said, based on like the audio she's hearing when she's at practice, maybe some of the, the, the behind the scenes stuff that she's seen so far, like there is so much more to that guy in terms of his smarts, in terms of how he knows the football game. And that's what they, they want to make sure they get that depth of his character in there. And that, that, that's what gets me excited because really our only evidence that, that he's like a smart football guy is when occasionally he gets a good football question on, on the podium, but really we're like, okay, he took over the offense and it got better. I want to see, I want to see him like actually saying stuff like we need to do this, 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 and then like seeing evidence of it work or something like, I want to see the, the football smarts guy in action because we, we really were results based. We, we only see the results. We don't see him talk a lot of like X's and O's that much. So I, I'm excited that that's something that I, at least they have interest in showing. 